so much for coming out tonight. Um, I want to be, very, as we get started for this memorial, uh, I just want to clarify uh, what we, the reason why we are here and the reason why we're not here. The reasons why we're not here, today is not a rally. Uh, today is not a, a you know, political event. It's not a protest. It's not, um, uh, it's not even a pro-life rally in the sense that today is a memorial. It is a memorial because in the building behind me, over the last 36 years, there have been, to our best estimates, that we can, based on, on the best as we were able to figure, approximately 40,000 babies who have lost their lives right here. And that is a travesty. And these are babies that go unseen, unremembered, unrecognized. And so today is about them. Today we are here to give them that recognition and that dignity that every single one of us deserves when we pass on at the end of our life. And they have been denied that. And so they are getting that tonight because you showed up. And so thank you for doing that. We have 400 roses that we've passed out. And... Um, by the end of the event, if we have extras, feel free to grab a few more because we want to make sure every rose gets left. We're gonna, I'll, I'll explain as we go, uh, but we're gonna leave them on this fence right here. And each rose represents 100 babies that have been lost. So think of that for a moment. I'm, uh, we'll try to get a head count later so we can try to put some images to this, but I, I'm guessing we've got a, about 100 people here. One rose for this whole crowd of people. And we have 400 of them. So that is why we were here today, is for those 40,000 children who've lost their lives. Uh, a couple of important notes is that while the business here has stopped uh, since March, and they have not committed any abortion since then. And they have been preparing, you know, they've painted, over, they've moved all the signs, and they've listed the building for sale. It has not sold yet. So the business is over, but the building is still their private property. So, um, uh, so, so let's keep that in mind that we still want to be mindful of that. We don't want to give them any reason here at the very end to hassle us. So uh, that's why we've block this off let's be mindful the alley here is, is is designates their private driveway and the public property so the alley and the sidewalk we're good so please uh, keep that in mind um, and so what we're gonna do today is um, uh, we're gonna have um, an opening song uh, and then we'll have an opening prayer from Father Mark and we're gonna do some scripture readings and we're gonna have a few testimonies and then at that point, after the testimonies, I'm going to come back on and I'm going to explain to you the opportunity you will each have to come up and pray and pay your condolences just like we would for any individual person that we knew who we went to pay our respects at the end of their life. And um, so, uh, again, I thank you. This is, this is uh, and, and as we pray, too, because the building still is not sold, even though they've closed the business, pray that it sells and that someone buys this quick and just bulldozes this whole place <laughs> that has been my prayer uh, we want to make sure that that this does sell and um, uh, so then we know this is permanent 100% okay 
So, um, so, so thank you again for coming. And then, um, um, oh, well, we're gonna we're gonna jump in to um, to the opening prayer and the readings, and then we have our song during the condolences. So, um, at this point, I would like to ask um, our chaplain, Father Mark Salas. Beloved, let us pray. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Lord God, open our hearts to your presence here with us. We have gathered at this place where unspeakable crimes against humanity have taken place. We have gathered in prayerful remembrance to offer you thanks at least here. The killing has come to an end. We entrust to your care all those untold thousand souls whose lives were tragically ended here and other locations of this business. We ask you to heal and forgive the parents who fearfully rejected this gift of life. We beg that you would bring to conversion all those who have worked in this place and its former locations. As que sean conscientes del mal que han cometido, a tus más inocentes y preciosos hijos, llévalos contritos a ti. El único que puede sanar y perdonar eres tú. Acompaña a todos aquellos que se dedicaron a la oración en este lugar a través de los años y con aquellos cuyo testimonios como consejeros de acerca mostraron a tantos el camino para salir del miedo y la desesperanza. Acompaña a los cientos de niños que fueron salvados de una muerte segura en este lugar y a sus familias. Haz los signos para que siempre sirvan como un recordatorio para que nosotros de la belleza y la bondad de toda vida humana tan preciosa ante tus ojos. Pedimos todas estas cosas, confiados en tu poder para sanar en la alegre participación de tu victoria en Jesucristo nuestro Señor. Amén. For our first reading, we have Mrs. Nidia Correa, who is the director of the Guiding Star Pregnancy Help Center who has helped so many of the women who were almost deceived by this place and were able to be re redirected and receive the loving care and hope that they offer to choose life. A reading from the book of Revelations. Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth had passed away, and the sea was no more. And I saw the holy city, a new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, See, the home, God, the home of God is among mortals. He will dwell with them, they will be his peoples, and God himself will be with them. He will wipe away every tear from their eyes. Death will be no more. Mourning and crying and pain will be no more. For the first things have passed away. And the one who was seated on the throne said, See, I am making all things new. The word of the Lord. For the psalm, we'll be reciting and singing Psalm 23, led by the choir from St. Mark's Church.
seen his star rising and have come to worship him. Alleluia. Beloved, the Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. When Herod realized that he had been deceived by the Magi, he became furious. He ordered the massacre of all the boys in Bethlehem and its vicinity, two years old and under, in accordance with the time he had ascertained from the Magi. Then was fulfilled what had been said through Jeremiah the prophet, a voice is heard in Ramah, sobbing in loud lamentation. Rachel, weeping for her children, she would not be consoled since they were no more. Herodes entonces, cuando vio, se vio burlado por los magos, se enojó mucho y mandó matar a los niños menores de dos años que había en Belén y todos sus alrededores, conforme al tiempo que había inquirido de los magos. Entonces se cumplió lo que fue dicho por el profeta Jeremías cuando dijo, Voz fue oída en Ramá, grande lamentación, lloró y gemido, Raquel que llora por sus hijos, que no quiso consolar porque padecieron. Evangelio del Señor. Beloved, we gather today uh, to pray for the parents of estimated 40,000 uh, uh, children who over 36 years have had that hard choice of silencing a heartbeat. The heartbeat, of course, is the great timpani of life, the symphony that God has created. Every heartbeat is unique and different to the point that you've heard the story, right, of countless moms whose lives were saved because the kid was fussy, the kid was fussy. But what happened is there is an arrhythmia in the mother's heart. Her heartbeat had changed and the child did not recognize his, his or her mom's heartbeat. And that's what they were longing to sync with, to calm them, to soothe them. It was the heartbeat. When two people fall in love, you measure their heartbeats and little by little, They'll start coming together, and if they sync within 15 minutes of knowing each other, they tend to have not only a second date, but a long life together, because they share the same values. And so the heartbeat is one of the most beautiful things that God has entrusted to the world and to all of us. And when two heartbeats go in and one comes out, that is a great pain. But how wonderful that in our city, after 36 years of hard work, ministry and prayer on this sidewalk in January for 40 uh, days of life in the cold in the rain amongst insults and spittle and uh, coffee poured on us and all kinds of stuff that chapter here has changed and heartbeats here will no longer be silenced but more than that we have been given hope after all the hard work of sidewalk counselors saying you're not alone there are other heartbeats that you can join. There are other people that you can be united with that will teach you not only how to have the child and bring the child to life, but more than that, how to be a loving parent. Because so many come here thinking that it's a death sentence for them if they keep the child. Their education, their future, their planning. It's not a welcoming society if they keep the child at such a young age. But we've been able to develop, develop that culture of life here in El Paso, where we say it is not a death sentence. It is a life invitation. You will finish your studies. You will find work and housing. And your life will be good because of this child, not in spite of this child. Lo bello de la sinfonía del corazón que late esa sinfonía que llena el universo con sonido, con amor, con calor. No es un error, no es un mal, es una invitación. 
y el Señor que es el gran compositor no destruyó el pecado por, por uh, desaparecer pero lo convirtió y en sus llagas somos sanadas y estas llagas completas siempre serán sanadas una vez escuché una homilía donde el Padre dijo que cuando la persona peca el Señor que es el gran compositor de la sinfonía escribe su sinfonía ¿verdad? y cuando la sinfonía uh, toca una nota incorrecta el gran compositor el Señor cambia el resto de la sinfónica para que esa nota que no era apropiada se reescribe y esa nota era necesaria para el resto de la composición y más que eso esa nota forma parte de la gran composición de nuestra vida de nuestra sociedad de nuestra comunidad por eso el Señor no desea la muerte del pecador no desea la finalidad de los errores pero en su gran misericordia sabiduría, fuerza y amor acompaña a todos aquellos que piensan tales cosas acompañan todos esos que vinieron aquí pensando que tenían que terminar la gran composición de ese corazón latiente y ya no fue el caso, no para el Señor Qué bello su gran ministerio que ustedes han llevado para poder uh, cumplir esta misión, esta labor y seguir, ¿verdad?, rezando por aquellos que hayan perdido sus vidas, rezando por aquellos que hayan terminado las vidas de sus hijos, papás y mamás, para que no... Uh, we don't boast of our work, but it's a sign and an affirmation to continue to pray, to continue to sacrifice, to continue to um, offer our hearts a loving heart to every child in every moment at every instant. Thank you, Father. We're now going to have a few testimonies, but I just, it came to me to observe. I'm sitting listening to this beautiful sound of this baby. Amen. And I think I'm actually glad because. You know, as a parent, if you've had children, that in that moment of birth, that's the most beautiful sound. Because you know everything's okay. And you know they've got air in their lungs. And there have been 40,000 babies who didn't have that opportunity to even cry out and let us know they needed help. Their silence was silenced. And that's what makes this the most, in, of, all the, of all the horrible injustices in the world, in every other situation, the victim can at least cry out. Even if there's no one there, to at least cry out and let someone know, I need help. But not in the victims of abortion. They can't even cry out. They're snuffed out before they even have air in their lungs. Truly the poorest of the poor. And one of those stories that is very special and very important to our community is the story of one baby who was named Joseph Thomas. And so here to share that story with us tonight is uh, one of my heroes and mentors who's done years and years of sidewalk outreach right here on this spot. I can almost see her footprints worn into the asphalt over here, Mrs. Karen Cates. show you a picture it's graphic so that's your warning um, so what you're looking at here are the remains of a baby and on the side you see the abortion clinic hilltop you could see red tape right here on the bottom and there are police officers on the scene On Good Friday, 2011, there were prayer warriors out here early that morning praying. The neighbor right here that lived next door 
came to Miguel, who was praying, and said, Miguel, my dog was sniffing around the parking lot, and I went to investigate what he was sniffing. And he wasn't biting it, he wasn't growling at it, he was just sniffing it, kind of almost having respect for what he was looking at. So he realized that it was the dismembered body of a baby, and he put it in a bag. And he said, Miguel, I put the bag by the dumpster that's back there. And Miguel went over there and opened the bag. And immediately he brought the baby to an image of Our Lady of Guadalupe that, he, that they would hang right here on this wall. Immediately he brought the precious baby to our mother. And Gabby was also here. And they immediately wanted to give him dignity. So they gave him a name. And they said, what should we call him? And I think Miguel said, Joseph. And then Gabby said, Thomas. So that's how he got his name in that moment. They wanted to give him dignity and they named him Joseph Thomas. And Thomas is after Father Richard Thomas, who was a champion for the unborn. He was a priest who would come out to the abortion clinics regularly. He was at the pro-life marches, and he was very pro-life. So that's how he got his name, is Joseph Thomas. Immediately, they called the police. And while they waited for the police, they called Lila Rose from Live Action to tell her, what do we do? And they also called Abby Johnson. If you've heard of Abby, she used to work at an abortion clinic. And one of her jobs was to look at the dismembered body and put it together to make sure all the pieces were there. And she was able to tell us by looking at the pictures that we sent that this baby was about 12 weeks, 12 weeks old. She said that the feet were remarkably formed already. Um, the police arrived and the body was given to the police. And they went into the clinic and they were in there for a, a while, not too long. And now at this point I'm there and I'm standing where you're standing there on the sidewalk with other witnesses, waiting to see what would happen. Because before they took his body, we said, please give the body back to us. We want to give Joseph Thomas a proper burial. Please don't let them keep his body. Let, give us the opportunity to give that, this baby dignity. So we waited out there and finally a cop came and he said, um, the clinic said it's not theirs, but we let them dispose of it. They said that they would dispose of it. And it was devastating to us because we know it's theirs. And it was devastating that they would give them back the body, you know, instead of letting us give that baby respect. For a long time, we wondered what happened? Why were these why, was his, or his, why were his remains in the parking lot? Okay, they were on the parking lot on this side, right kind of in the center, there's a door. So they probably parked right there. When, well, let me get to the part. So things in darkness usually come to light. And Gabby ended up talking to a former nurse who worked at this abortion clinic. And she told her, you know what? I, I assisted the doctor on that abortion. It was an underage girl who showed up to Hilltop for the abortion. And they took her to Santa Teresa because they weren't gonna do the abortion here because she was underage without her mom or dad knowing. So they took her to Santa Teresa where they did the abortion on this young girl she said how old she was but it's kind of blurry i don't know if it was 15 years old when they came back 
and they parked they were unloading this is what the nurse said that they were unloading the car and they had the remains because they were going to dispose of the remains he here at hilltop and that by accident the remains fell out and nobody noticed they went inside the clinic when it went on with their their day and the remains just stayed in the parking lot and that's why the neighbor's dog found those remains so yes it was their baby it was an underage girl 12 week old baby lost his life and you know what till this day no legal justice has ever been given to this precious baby who to, who in 2020 would be nine years old nine years old okay it's been nine years and 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 since this happened so i i pray that you guys can share his story with others and i even have printouts of this image if you would like some i printed some out and you can share them with people as you share the story of Joseph Thomas. Thank you. Joseph Thomas was found on Good Friday, the day we commemorate our Lord's sacrifice, the shedding of innocent blood for our sins. And this is, this is the opposite this is this unholy inversion of the sacrifice of our Lord because we're taking selfishly the lives of innocent to cover sins. And the, 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 the craziest part is that they even use the very words of our Lord when on Good Friday and he said, this is my body given for you. And they've turned that into their rally cry and they say, this is my body. This is my choice. Here to share one of the stories of the deception and the pain and trauma that has happened in this building is a dear friend of ours and her husband, Mrs. Esther Garcia. January 19th, 1998. I was 18 years old when I walked into Hilltop Reproductive Clinic as a scared young girl feeling like I only had one choice. Walking in with a bright future, with goals and ambition, and walking out broken, empty, confused, dead inside, like my soul had been ripped out. The next 13 years, I went through life just existing and not living. I was suffering from many symptoms of post-abortion trauma and feeling like my life, like something was missing in my life. All the while, being silent in my suffering. I couldn't understand why I was doing the things I was doing, and I couldn't fill the void in my soul. Finally, in 2011, I found a retreat for those suffering from the pain, guilt, and shame of abortion called Rachel's Vineyard. That weekend saved my life. That weekend allowed me to ask for forgiveness to grieve the loss of my son and to give him back the dignity that I so selfishly took from him many years ago. Now I stand before you by the power of the Lord's love, mercy, and forgiveness. Only the, love, only the Lord could remove my shame and replace it with grace to be able to stand here today 
to share this with you. He has filled my heart with the love and compassion to journey with many courageous women like myself who have also been broken by their decision of abortion. I have prayed outside this very clinic with a deep pain in my heart knowing this is where my precious son perished. But today I stand here with peace in my heart knowing that no other woman will be hurt here and no other precious babies will lose their life here. If anyone here today needs healing from a past abortion, you're not alone. We are here for you, and I thank each of you for being here to honor my not only my son, but the thousands of other babies whose lives ended because of this place. I would li now like to share a letter that I wrote to my son, who I named David Michael. My precious boy, you would have been 22 years old by now. And my heart will always long to know you, to touch you and to feel you close to me. I am so sorry that I was not strong enough to fight for your life. I'm sorry that I allowed you to be hurt and ripped out of my womb and thrown away. You did not deserve that. No babies deserve that. I allowed myself to be misguided by people who didn't have mine nor your best interest at heart. I should have gone to those who love me and who would have loved you too. I never gave you a chance to breathe fresh air, to feel the warm sun on your skin or to feel your mother's embrace. I hope that somehow you could hear the prayers from the people praying outside the clinic that day as you went to be with God. I will never stop wondering who you would be today, what you would look like, and if you would look like your siblings. I know you would have been a good big brother to them. You would have you would have done great things in this world because God created you. I had no right to do what I did. And if I knew then what I know now, you would be alive and well. I am grateful for your forgiveness and I will continue to honor you by speaking up about the truth of abortion. Women need to know what I didn't know that day. They need to know how a mother's heart will be deeply changed when their child's life is terminated. I was already a mother that day. I was your mother, and I should have protected you. My precious David Michael, please continue to intercede for all those warriors who fight for the lives of the unborn and offer support to the mothers and fathers. Pray for your mama as I help other mamas reconnect with their babies and find the healing they deserve. And if you're anything like your mom, I'm sure you're up there organizing a gathering with all the precious babies to pray for their mother's grieving hearts. I hope you're proud of me. I love you with all my heart, son. And you will always be my first baby. I look forward to the day that I can hold you in my arms for eternity. Love, mom. to follow uh, Esther is her husband Edward <laughs> this is a letter from all the children that have been lost 
to their mother. Whispers of love. Mother, dear mother, could we talk? You and I? I know your heart is broken. And I often see you cry. I want so much to hug you, then as tight as tight can be. Because I think the tears you shed are sad. Sad tears for me. Dear mother, I forgive you. Oh, please believe I do. It must have been so difficult, so very hard for you. They told you things would be all right. Your life would just go on, but never said how much you'd weep and grieve when I'd be gone. Yet we can still be very close and love each other too. For though I'm now with God, I'll always be part of you. So mother, won't you name me please? And from my home above, I'll hear you and I'll come each time you call me with love. I'd like to be the faithful friend in whom you can confide. Your sentinel. Your sentinel before God's throne. The angel at your side. So talk to me and sing to me. And pray with me, please do. And when you send a smile to me, I'll son send one back to you. So don't be sad, dear mother. You'll be just fine, I know. For I'll be there in spirit, wherever you may go. And when God brings you home to me, my heart will know true bliss. As I run up to greet you with a great big hug and kiss, your child. I, I hope that you've noticed this little boy over here playing joyfully. <laughs> in a place that there's not been much joy. And he's very special to us, and I'd like to invite his mother, Jackie, to share a little bit about her son, Andy. Hello, everyone. Thank you for having me today. This is Andres. Andres Sebastián. Fifteen weeks of Andy being inside of my womb, I had made a decision on coming down to this specific clinic. I had already thought to myself that by doing this, my life would go back to normal. Although I wasn't thinking straight. tossing and turning that night before I would look at my phone and just look up pictures of him well of babies of 15 through 17 weeks because honestly I don't remember if it was what exactly week and I remember not really sleeping that night and I just kept thinking to myself what I should do because they had to hold me that he, like he was already fully developed everything 
and that they didn't know the gender though. I only needed like four more weeks to go. And God gave me, my, my mother and, my, and God gave me um, the reality to face my decision and that I was trying to make. And I decided not to go through it the, the following morning, which was at yeah, eight o'clock my appointment. And I remember driving down I-10, knowing that my baby will stay with me and that nobody could take him away from me. And that I, I was the only person that could protect him. And ever since coming, and ever since leaving that, this clinic, um, it was the best decision that I had made. When I came, people were standing here thinking that I was gonna come in for an abortion. And I had told them that I wasn't, that I had made the, my decision to not make it, and that I had planned it. And honestly, whether I was with his father or not, like Andy will always be with me. And I'm so glad that I did make that decision because he's the love of my life and I wouldn't imagine my life right now without him. And God gave me mercy because He's a healthy, beautiful baby boy and full of smiles every day. And without him, I don't know what I would do without him. And I'm so glad that this clinic is finally shut down. I remember the owner specifically looking at me with an ugly face, just knowing that I wasn't gonna make this decision. And I finally, And finally, it's gone. There's no more women being hurt. No more babies taken away. And then this is my motivation to keep pushing every day. I wouldn't be here without him if I had made that decision because I would think how he would look and who would he simply be, his name, how he, everything. And he'll be finally two years old this October 31st and I'm so glad I have him today in my arms it would have killed me inside leaving my I wouldn't be able to continue on I wouldn't I would fall into a depression and I would probably just not be able to continue on it would have killed me from the inside. But I thank God for helping me and blessing me with Andres. Thank you. You are a handsome little rascal. Just trying to unplug everything up here. But the world needs more rascals, right? At this point, we want to invite each one of you to um, have an opportunity to pay your condolences and pray. Um, at this point, we're, we're going to be having the um, Divine Mercy Chaplet sung. Uh, Father Mark will bless the, the property here. And, um, and while those are happening, I invite each of you to take your roses. Um, and first, if we can, if we can first start with anyone with children. Let's bring your children forward, and um, and what we'll do is we'll have we have a wreath and we have the fence where we're going to put the roses. The children can put their roses on the wreath. There's some kneelers if you want to kneel briefly to pray for a moment. And and here, what I would invite you to do is take one rose petal. Listen for a moment. Uh, take one rose petal off each rose, and when we get over here, you'll see that there's two very small caskets the smallest one was donated by um, the uh, uh, Trappist caskets which is a ministry of religious brothers that, um, that that this is what they do they make caskets uh, themselves and they donate them also to anyone who loses a child under the age 18 including those lost before birth my wife and I lost a son, Dominic, and they sent 
a casket exactly like this one. And we had a small funeral with the family, and we named him and gave him that that same dignity everyone deserves. And so this is the this is the same style, the first one for Joseph Thomas. I invite you to, um, and and in that one, that's an honor, a memorial specifically for him. There's a photograph of his remains in that one. The second one that's larger um, was donated by um, a local funeral home. I forget which one. Perches, Perches Funeral Home, uh, because they were very supportive of this and they wanted to be a part of it. So in that larger white one is for all the unseen, unnamed babies. And I invite you to take one rose petal from every rose and place it in the, the larger white casket on your way by. And then when you're done with that, we're going to loop over and you can place the rose into this chain link fence right here. And we're going to cover this whole fence with 400 roses before the end. Does that make sense to everybody? So we'll start with the children. If you want to start, you can come up and um, initially put some in this wreath. Uh, Jessica, can you help direct some folks as you come up? And uh, and then if uh, if we all get through, we're going to continue finishing the Divine Mercy Chaplet, and then we'll wrap things up with a, a closing uh, prayer. And we're going to have a, on, a little small ceremony with the Knights of Columbus Honor Guard. Brian Mott, can you come up? the whole world for the sake 
of his sorrowful passion. Have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world for the sake of his sorrowful passion have mercy on us and on the whole world for the sake of his sorrowful passion have mercy on us and on the whole world for the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the your mercy in us, that in difficult moments we might not despair nor become despondent, but with great confidence submit ourselves to your holy will, which is love and mercy itself. Jesus, I trust in you. Jesus, I trust in you. Jesus, I trust in you. At this point, Father... At this point, Father Mark is going to uh, do a blessing, a couple blessings that he'll explain, and then uh, we'll do the litany together that you have on the on the papers if you if you have one. Beloved, this is a place where many bodies were destroyed, many bodies were um, separated from their souls, separated from their moms. As such, we will do the blessing of a burial place that. It will no longer be um, a place of death, but a place of resurrection, a place 
as a cemetery, a place of rest, a, a place of awaiting the resurrection in Christ. And so we pray, Lord God, Father of everlasting glory, solace of the sorrow, life of the just, glory of the lowly, humbly we import to you to keep this cemetery free from any vileness of unclean spirits, to cleanse and to bless it, and finally to give everlasting wholeness to the bodies that were brought here for death. Almighty God and Father, it is our certain faith that your Son who died on the cross was raised from the dead from the first fruits of all who have fallen asleep. Grant through your mercy that these little ones who have gone to their rest in Christ may share joy in his resurrection. Through Christ our Lord, amen. We will now bless the two monuments dedicated to the unborn, one for uh, Joseph Thomas and one for so many victims of Hilltop. O God, by whose mercy the faithful departed find rest, bless these grave monuments. O God, whose by mercy the faithful departed find rest, bless these grave markers by which we commemorate the resting place of Joseph Thomas and many more victims. May they have everlasting life and rejoice with your saints forever and ever through Christ our Lord. Amen. Eternal rest grant unto them, O Lord, that your light shine upon them. May the souls and the souls of the faithful departed, especially to the sin of abortion, to the mercy of God, rest in peace. At this point, we will be led through the litany of, um, in response to abortion, as we bless the monuments and now um, this cemetery of Hilltop. in response to abortion. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, hear us. Christ, hear us. God, the Father, creator of the world. Have mercy on us. God, the Son, through whom all things were made. Have mercy on us. God, the Holy Spirit, Lord and giver of life. Have mercy on us. Lord Jesus, the beginning and the end. Have mercy on us. Lord Jesus, the way, the truth, and the life. Lord Jesus, the resurrection and the life. Have mercy on us. Lord Jesus, eternal word of life. Have mercy on us. Lord Jesus, conceived in the womb of the Virgin Mary. Have mercy on us. Lord Jesus, lover of the poor and weak. Have mercy on us. Lord Jesus, defender of the helpless. Have mercy on us. Lord Jesus, bread of life. Have mercy on us. For every sin against life. Have mercy on us. For the sin of abortion. For the daily killing of innocent babies. Have mercy on us. For the bloodshed throughout our land. Have mercy on us. For the silent screams of your children. Have mercy on us. For the killing of your future disciples. Have mercy on us. For the exploitation of women by abortion. Have mercy on us. For the silence of your people. Have mercy on us. For the apathy of your people. Have mercy on us. For the cooperation of your people in this tragedy. Have mercy on us. For our preborn brothers and sisters killed by abortion responses, Lord, hear our prayer for our preborn brothers and sisters threatened by abortion. Lord, hear our prayer. For our brothers and sisters who have survived abortion. Lord, hear our prayer. For mothers who have had abortions. Lord, hear our prayer. For mothers tempted to have abortions. Lord, hear our prayer. For mothers pressured to have abortions. Lord, hear our prayer. For mothers who have refused to have abortions. Lord, hear our prayer. For the fathers of aborted babies. Lord, hear our prayer. For the families of aborted babies. Lord, for the families of those tempted to have abortion. Lord, hear our prayer. For abortionists, particularly for the conversion of the El Paso abortionists and, and abortion worker uh, facility workers. Lord, hear our prayer. 
for el paso abortionist franz the art and gloria martinez and those at planned parenthood in el paso Lord, hear our prayers. for the conversion of all who assist and cooperate in abortion especially the abortion facility staff workers for doctors and nurses that they may nurture life. Lord, hear our prayers. For government leaders that they may defend life. Lord, hear our prayers. For the clergy that they may speak up for life. Lord, hear our prayers. For the pro-life movement. Lord, hear our prayers. For those who speak, write, and work and work to end abortion. Lord, hear our prayers. For those who help provide alternatives to abortion. Lord, hear our prayers. For those who promote adoption. Lord, hear our prayers. For the national and local pro-life groups. For unity in the pro-life movement. Lord, hear our prayers. For courage and perseverance in pro-life work. Lord, hear our prayers. For those who suffer ridicule and rejection for their stand for life. Lord, hear our prayers. For those imprisoned for defending life. Lord, hear our prayers. For those who have been injured and mistreated for defending life. Lord, hear our prayers. For legal professionals. Lord, hear our prayers. For courts and judges. Lord, hear our prayers. For our police officers. For our educators, Lord, hear our for media professionals, Lord, hear our in thanksgiving for the babies saved from abortion, especially in Santa Teresa and El Paso, Lord, hear our in thanksgiving for the mothers and fathers saved and healed from abortion, Lord, hear our in thanksgiving for the former abortion providers who have become pro-life, in thanksgiving for all those who take a stand against abortion. And thanksgiving for the call to be a part of the pro-life movement. Lord, hear our prayers. Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. Lord, graciously hear us, O Lord. Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Let us pray, Almighty and ever-living God, you have created all things through your Son, Jesus Christ. He tempted the power of death by his past he, he trampled the power of death by his paschal mystery. May all who acknowledge and may, may all who acknowledge you promote the sacredness of life and always serve you faithfully through the same Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Okay, and at, that, at this point we're going to have uh, the Knights of Columbus close and carry the caskets. If we can make a little bit of a pathway, they're going to load them in this first white vehicle on the right. And taps will be played by Brother Knight Matthew Susser. Beloved, let us pray. Lord our God, you have indeed opened our hearts to your presence here with us today as we have gathered in prayerful remembrance before this now closed hilltop facility, abortion facility. And we thank you yet again that by your grace and active working in our hearts, actively working in our hearts and minds of so many of this day have finally arrived, so many that this day has finally arrived and that at least here, the killing has come to an end. Father, 
We ask you to continue sending forth ever-increasing numbers of dedicated laborers into this mighty struggle, even while continuing to strengthen the resolve of all those who have labored so faithfully and fruitfully these many years to end abortion once and for all. Bless their ongoing prayers and efforts as they continue their ministry to save the precious lives of those untold thousand souls still being taken by other abortion facilities in El Paso and across the Southwest. And as we conclude tonight's memorial prayer service, we pray, Father, that we may all come together again soon to offer similar prayers of remembrance before the closed doors of the last two abortion facilities in the borderland. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Beloved, the Lord be with you. Amen. May Almighty God bless you all. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Okay, thank you all for coming. And at this point, the memorial portion is over. Uh, but to mark this as a also going into a sign of hope, this is a facility, no more women are crying here. No more babies are dying here. This is a victory for God. Only God could do this. And this is a battle that you have won by your prayers, your fasting, and your witness. But as we know, there are still two more facilities. And this is not the time to slacken and say, oh, God is taking care of this. This place is closed. This is a place to say we've got three uh, uh, in the last uh, last three years there have been god closed has closed three abortion facilities in the borderland area in las cruces uh the reproductive services and now here there's two remaining okay so this is not the time to go home and pat ourselves this is the time to say prayer and fasting works and we're right in the middle of 40 days for life if you're not already signed up to pray we want to continue to be out in front of the last two facilities because this is just the beginning and i say we go five for five five close in five years amen, amen. And as a sign of that hope and that mercy, as an ongoing memorial of especially Joseph Thomas, as many of you were blessed to help us with, we just uh, just recently has arrived, is our Save the Storks mobile ultrasound unit. And this is the first time it's been out here. And there's now 59 of these units around the country that bring the life-saving power of, uh, of free ultrasound images right to the front door of abortion facilities. And, um, and every single one of those 59 units has a unique name. And so we requested and it was approved that this, this unit is named Joseph Thomas. And so you'll, you'll see on the wheel well, so this is an ongoing memorial, life bringing memorial to save children from the same abortion business that took his. We had planned on parking it right out here, but now we're just gonna park it in Santa Teresa. <laughs> And so, uh, so continue to come out and pray and fasting. And at this point, we're going to uh, make a little room to pull it forward. Uh, and Father Mark is going to bl officially bless the unit, the ultrasound machine. You all are here for that inaugural blessing. Um, and while we're doing this, the, the choir from St. Mark's is going to be singing Rosusito. So we're going to sing along uh, while the, the blessing is taking place. Is Brian there to pull forward?
grace and your mercy in the life you have entrusted them. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Blessed are you, God of our Father, through your Son you commanded your people to walk in the newness of life and to share a shed gift of life, to care compassionately for the, con for the sinner, for the afflicted, for the broken. Attend to the desires of your children brought here in contemplation, that by the grace of your Spirit make this unit and this instrument a house of blessing, a center of love, of hope, and of eternal life. For sonographers practice here the art of healing wisely, prudently. For nurses, aid will serve all pregnant mothers and fathers with care, where the faithful will come to visit Christ in the person of their brothers and sisters, if they grant comforted in their illness. The patients will quickly regain their health, joyfully thank the favor they have received in the gift of life. And may lives always be safe here, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Beloved, the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Bow your heads and pray for God's blessing. God, comfort here the afflicted and strength of the weak. You have brought us together to dedicate this unit for the establishment of the gift of life. May he strengthen you by his grace so that in serving the pregnant with tender charity, you may serve Christ himself in the innocent, who he who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. 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 And may Almighty God bless you in the work you do on behalf of the sin of abortion and its remission, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.